What's up guys? I'm Laura from Reading in Bed and this is going to be the intimidating TBR tag. I was tagged by Sean the Book Maniac. Thank you, Sean. I also watched Heidi of My Reading Life do one of these and probably several others. It has been making the rounds. So I'm not going to tag people at the end just to get that out of the way because lots of you have done it. If you haven't done it, go ahead and do it. Um, now one thing to know about this tag and me and TBRs is that my TBR is mostly virtual. It's either books that I've marked as to be read on Goodreads or it's my physical TBR list um, in my bullet journal, which you can see is very short. Like my TBR list on Goodreads is like 200 maybe 300 books whereas this is like maybe 20 so this the stuff on here is a lot more serious and you can I'm like kind of marking them off as I go like they're books I might already own or have received a really glowing recommendation or something whereas Goodreads is just oh that sounds interesting <laughs> and there's books on there that I marked as to be read in like 2011 so you know um, so I'm not one of those people with a literal or physical stack or anything like that. So with that said, uh, question number one is what book are you unable to finish? Um, I mean, again, I'm going to overthink this tag. <laughs> I mean, there's like literally millions, billions of books that I haven't been able to finish because I guess I haven't been able to read them. Uh, I guess I'll take this opportunity to just quickly go through the books I have DNF'd this year, of which there are only three, at least only three that I wrote down. Um, one was A Bollywood Affair by uh, Sonali Dev, another one of my forays into romance that didn't go so well. It was just so cheesy and so contrived, I just couldn't, despite many, many glowing recommendations for that one. So, um, the second was Kindred by Octavia Butler. Uh, it was the dialogue. The dialogue was just so like not how people talk at all and I just couldn't get over that uh, and then the third was I Contain Multitudes by Ed Young which I tried as an audiobook um, and I just found my mind kept wandering uh, and I only listen to audio when I'm driving so like it's not like I was distracted by something else that's why I listen when I'm driving because I'm you know like I can't do anything else <laughs> I'm not one of those people who listens to audiobooks while I'm you know, working or cleaning the house or something. Anyways, it just did not capture me whatsoever. Um, which is too bad because I thought that would be good. So now the rest of these questions are sort of preceded by what book have you yet to read because number two, because you haven't had time. Again, uh, like I said in the first one, I mean, literally every book that's ever been written except for the, you know, maybe maybe a couple hundred or thousand that I've read in my lifetime. I don't know how to answer that. Um, number three is a book you haven't read yet because it's a sequel. Well, this isn't a sequel, but it has sequels. So I've had this, uh, my brilliant friend, the first in uh, the these Ferrante novels um, for years. I first heard about this series when I was at Book Expo America back in 2015 and everyone was losing their shit because there were arcs of like the last book. Um, I read uh, one of her books, uh, the title's gone out of my head, but one of her standalone books and loved it, like absolutely loved it. But I'm, I'm intimidated because if I read this, I have to read three more. Uh, and it's just, it feels like a lot, a lot of commitment. Um, number four is a book you haven't read yet because it's brand new. Uh, well, for that one, I mean, I am, I'm not following the whole Man Booker Prize, but I'm like kind of following it. So I'm waiting for Washington Black by S.E. Adujan to come out. And is it just me? Like, is it already out in the UK, but not in Canada? Because like, she's Canadian. Um, it seems like all these UK bloggers and booktubers have it. And I'm like, did you all get advanced copies or what's going on here? So... Um, question five is a book you haven't read yet because you read a book by the same author and didn't enjoy it. Um, yeah, I don't really have one for that. Although <laughs> I read Hesia Dugin's first book and well, I wouldn't say I didn't enjoy it, but I didn't love it. Like I'm really just eager to get Washington Black because it's on the long list. So there's that. Um, question number six is a book you haven't read yet because you're just not in the mood. Again, I don't, I mean, yeah, like at any given point in time, there's books I'm not in the mood for, but 
I, yeah, I don't really understand this question. Like, that's not an excuse to have never read a book because you're going to be in the mood for it sometime, right? I mean, yeah. Anyways, um, so question seven is what book have you yet to read because it's humongous? That's not going to stop me. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I enjoy a long book. I guess, although saying that, saying I'm intimidated by reading four of these, even though I think the total only comes to like a little over a thousand pages with all four, maybe it's closer to 1500. Although I don't shy away from books that big. Um, you know, I just finished a read along for the Count of Monte Cristo. It's 1100 pages. Did the same for War and Peace last year. Uh, yeah, so I, I don't know. I don't, I don't think I have one. There's nothing I'm like, oh, it's like this single book is too many pages, but apparently when it's broken into four books of normal size, that's too much. So figure that one out. Um, Question eight is what book have you yet to read because it was a cover buy that turned out to have poor reviews? Again, I don't know because I don't really buy books for the cover, nor do bad reviews necessarily make me not want to read a book. <laughs> um, I do appreciate a good cover, but for me, it's more like if I've decided to buy a book, I may look at different editions and choose the edition that I like the most, but I don't really look at a book and say, oh, I like this cover, but I know nothing else about it, so I'm going to buy it. Um, yeah, I don't really do that. Uh, and then question, so the last question, question number nine is the most intimidating book in your TBR. That one's easy. That is Tristram Shandy by Lawrence Stern, which I do not have a physical copy of. Um, but that book is like kind of like my white whale. I attempted to read it, I think, during my first pregnancy. Yeah, I think so. Um, and I was, you know, very much of the, uh, oh, you know, like baby brain isn't really a thing and it's sexist to say that you get stupider when you're pregnant or after you have a baby. But then... Um, yeah, you actually do get stupider. <laughs> and I don't know that it all comes back either. But certainly, like late uh, into my first pregnancy, trying to read that book was not a good plan at all. Um, it actually sort of kicked off a big reading slump. And yeah, it was a whole thing. Uh, it's challenging because it's long. It's also challenging because it's I, like, if it was published today, we'd probably say it's experimental. It is supposed to read like an autobiography and it starts uh, before the character's birth and like details his birth. I, th I don't even think I got past the birth. I think <laughs> by the time I was done, the character had not been born yet. <laughs> and it was written, I think, in the 1700s. So there's, you know, a lot of language stuff going on. Um, it's just, yeah, it, it's it's a lot. Uh, but one of these days, I will get back to it. It'll happen. Not this year. <laughs> so uh, so that is it. That is the intimidating TBR tag. I'm not going to tag people because a lot of people have done it. But if you have not, please do feel free to do so. I love an intimidating book. And uh, sorry I couldn't answer some of these. But like to see more of your responses. Thanks for watching.